Do you want any device in your smart home to be safe on the internet? Do you want to be able to do this without touching everything in your smart home? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to surf net from any device in your home without changing configuration. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you want to click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. Okay, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to go over briefly whatever is DNS over HTTPS in case you hadn't seen my other videos. Then we'll go over the required items for you to be able to do this with any computer in your home without changing any configuration. And then we're going to talk about installing slash configuring Pi-hole slash Cloudflare to make this all happen. Well, first thing we need to talk about, in case you haven't seen my other videos you've had, you can use the chapter headings to, to skip on ahead, is what is DNS over HTTPS? This is one of the areas that is a security concern for just about everybody. DNS inquiries, which is what takes the name of the system you're looking for and takes it to an IP address so that your computer knows where to go find it or where the routers know how to go find it. That's out in the open, in the clear, anybody can see it. Think of it like this. When you send a letter to somebody and you write that all out, you stick it in an envelope and send it out, you've got reasonable certainty that what you put in that envelope is going to be safe as best it can be from prying eyes. A postcard, on the other hand, well, you got a nice picture on one side, and it is then the message on the other side is totally open for anybody and their brother to go see. So with sending DNS over HTTPS, basically we're taking the DNS message, wrapping it inside an envelope, which in this case is HTTPS, to where it's then secure until it hits the DNS server, which is way out on the internet. And a little bit better chance that it's going to be safe from from prying eyes so that's the basic of the premise up the videos we've done up until now have shown you how to do it with your pc or mac how to do it with smartphone this time we're going to set it up on raspberry pi with pi hole and that way you can get every device in your home protected this is going to be the main thing that you're going to have to have now I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. You can get by with a 3B if that's what you've got. But depending on what else you may want to do with this, a 4 is probably going to be have a little bit longer lifespan for you. So I've already got this put together. It's on a wired connection because at this point, I'm prob it's probably the way I'm going to tie it in the network because if it was on wireless and the AP goes down, then everybody at your home network is going to now not have this to reference against. So I'll probably put it on a wired connection, but we'll see. Got the power plugged in, but not connected because, yeah, we're not ready for that yet. But I do have an on-off switch on this so that we're ready to go. You'll also need as close to the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. Once you get that installed, we'll get it booted up. Then we can go about getting it getting Pi-hole and the Cloudflare client up and running. Well, to get the ball rolling, I've already got the micro SD card in my handy dandy card reader that came with one of my Raspberry Pis ready to go. So let's go ahead and we'll switch over to my Intel NUC here and get this plugged in. And yeah, there's a problem, but that's because I've been using this card for something else. So we'll go to Blaina Etcher. And see, it already sees the 16 gig card. 16 gigs is pretty much the minimum I'm using anymore. So we'll flash from file. And this is the one we just downloaded. This is the January 11th, uh, 2021 version of the Raspberry Pi OS. And we'll click start. And then it's gonna go through, well, you get a brief commercial on the left. It'll go through and get everything burned on there. And then we'll do a verification.
Okay, well now that we've got this burned, we were going to exit out of Balena Etcher. And since it automatically dismounts or ejects the card, then we're fine there. I'm gonna put that back in. We will open it back up. Go here to this computer, boot. Then we just go down here, we'll click new text document. We'll just call this SS8 and take off any extension. And because if you've not seen some of my Raspberry Pi videos before, in the later versions of the Raspberry Pi OS, SSH gets disabled by default on startup. So we're going to enable it so we can get into this once it boots up and have it ready to go. So now let's move it over to the Raspberry Pi and we'll get it booted up and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, took it a little bit to come up. That's probably because I wanted it to come up now. So we'll, we'll move over here. And I want, I think it's under appearance. Yeah, we're going to use something larger than 10 point font because I'd like to be able to read this without uh, having other challenges. Potential security risk and pi and then the default password. All right, and now we're going to do a few things. And we're going to go into raspy config. And I'm not going to do the wireless and we're going to change the name because that's how the default host name comes up. So we're going to call it uh, DOH, if I can spell here with capitals, dash piehole. Because I've got a second, I've got a piehole server running already, but this eventually is going to replace it. Now we've already changed the system name. So we want to go down here to localization and we want to set the time zone. So we'll say US and for my case, it's central. So we need to double check to make sure we got a few things up to date. So we'll do sudo apt update. And even though this has been out for just you know, not quite a month at this point. I always, it's always a good idea to make sure that you've got all the updates applied just to avoid potential problems. Sudo apt full upgrade. Yes, this will take a little bit of time, but it's going to be well worth the effort because this way you've got all the latest updates and you'll be able to potentially avoid some other issues. I decided to do a reboot because with having gone to a DHCP lease where I'm always giving the same address out to the Pi hole we're setting up with DNS over HTTPS, thought it would be a good idea to get it rebooted and then start this whole process again. So we've already got going directly from the Pi hole installation information. We'll just copy that whole line and paste it over here and hit enter. And then it should be installed here in just a few minutes. And I'm just taking the defaults that it's giving us to get things started and we'll go down here and we'll deselect IPv6 because at this point I'm not running IPv6 on my local network and it's already picked up that address. Yes, we're going to use that as a static, even though I've got it reserved on the internet router. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, fine. IP conflict. Uh, yes, we want to install the web admin interface. Yes, we're going to put the web server in. Yes, when we'll log uh, queries, just in case there is a problem, you've got something to go with. And you can always turn down the level of privacy mode. So we'll say OK. And now it's just a process of letting it get everything installed. Now, this is an important screen because it gives you what your admin login password is. And you can always change this if you want to. So we will copy that for right now. Wouldn't be a bad idea to, let's just go ahead and get Notepad opened up here just to give us something 
have it written down if there is a problem. Okay, we'll say okay. All right, installation is completed. So now if we go over here and we'll just open up another tab. Not 54, five is what I told it. And I didn't want that to happen. Okay, so we'll back up and admin. And we'll click login and we'll enter the password. And we'll click login again. And we'll save it on this machine. I'm not worried about that one. We're not going to check the passwords. So now this is the base part of Pi-hole up and running. Now we're going to move on to getting the Cloudflare piece installed. Well, on Pi-hole's website, they show you how to get this all up and running. So since we're running the 64-bit version, we will just copy that. And we will come over here and paste. So it's going to handle doing all the downloads that needs to be done and getting that installed. So you can't, can't make it any easier than that. And just to make sure we haven't missed anything. Okay, we'll hit enter there. All right. It didn't like that. Okay, re-ran it. And what happened was... I was not on the 64-bit version that I thought. So you can see now that's got that all up and running. So we've got everything ready that we need. So now what we'll have to go do is if we scroll down here, all it comes to matter is that we will go to a custom IP address and we will put that information in there. So let's go over here. And if we go settings, DNS, and we will unselect primary and secondary, and we will go to that. And if we go, we'll select a custom one IPv4. And so we go 127.0.0.127.0.0.1. And I believe it's pound sign 5053. Okay. Pound sign 5053. And we're not going to touch any of those other settings because from what I see here, okay, don't forget return and click on save. Okay, yeah, we understand that one. So we'll click on save. So now that's ready to go. And this is what covers if Cloudflare gets, if when you need to do an update. So it's not going to get updates through the package manager. So this is something, you know, maybe once a quarter, something like that, or at least every one or six months that you'll you'll want to do. This is what it takes to, to get it all up and running. Now, what you've got to do at this point is you're going to have to go into your internet router to get your DNS settings that are, you're handing out to everybody who gets a DHCP address. Once you've got that done, then you'll be able to start seeing information from this get populated. Now, we've got Cloudflare installed, but we don't have it running yet. So what we're going to need to do here is we'll shift over. And you see further down the page, we will come up here and we'll copy those two lines. Okay, so we've back into the SSH session. All right, now we've got the config file it's going to need. And we need to bring this over. And see, they are setting you up for the backup Cloudflare system. So that's good. And if we paste that in, we'll hit enter there. We will do control X and we will say, well, you can't see that. Let me, okay. Did a control X. We'll say yes. And we will hit enter. All right. Now that piece of the magic is done but we're still not done yet so we've got to install the service and we'll hit enter and then we've got to verify that that's done and and then if we go and we said run that command to make sure that it's working. And if it says we see that, then 
it looks like we're good to go. And we already got Kapaiho configured. Okay, I see where we made the mistake. I was jumping ahead. I should not have done that, but now we know what to do. So this is ready to get running. And see, updating Cloudflare. Okay, that that's, you can tackle another day, but you're up and you're running at this point. So now it's just a matter of you will have to either reboot your computers once you've made the changes to the DNS settings for the new Pi Hole system, because I've got one running under Docker, but I wanted to do this separate because I wasn't sure how some of this would handle. And I, what the heck, let's just go ahead and do it one. So now we're up and running. You know where to go from here. This is basically the the dashboard of things. If we go out here and we'll go, go to Google and see now the, the nice part with all this is now you start to see queries come through and it tells you it's block stuff. So it's all just a matter of getting things done. And I've redirected on my other pie hole, actually in within Unify so that it's already up in place. And then we'll just let this one run and you'll start to now have all your DNS lookups for all your devices now protected with DNS over HTTPS. Well, this video wouldn't be complete unless I showed you that everything we've gone and done is up and working and how to verify it. So let's switch over here to our trusty Intel NUC. And I've already got the Pi-hole admin page up. And in a future video, I'll show you how to get that work. And that, that was interesting to use it by its IP address. So we'll go to settings. And we'll go over here to DNS. Remember that setting. We're going to have to put that back. So we'll initially just switch over to Google's servers and we'll deselect that internal server, the, the internal DNS server that's running on top of Pi-hole. Now, as you can see, as, as they say there in the, we're not connected to Cloudflare. We're not using DNS over HTTPS. Now, remember those settings says we'll go back over here and then we will turn off the Google servers. We will go back over here to custom. And the nice thing with this custom server that we set up with a Cloudflare client, and if I can get everything typed here, right, is that you automatically reference both, if I can type here, you automatically reference both of Cloudflare's systems. Okay, so I believe we got everything back there. So let's go down here and we will click save. And okay, it's updated that. So now we can go back over to this page and we'll just refresh it. And there you go. So there's validation right there. And all I did was change the Raspberry Pi. And so anything going through the Raspberry Pi is being protected on the DNS lookups with DNS over HTTPS using Cloudflare. So you can't have it any easier to implement than that. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.